This is John. John is an Australian man in his 60s, doesn't like going to see his doctor, and he only goes because his wife Mary nags him to, and she usually goes with him. But when he does go, he does get his blood, uh, well, heart disease checked. And this includes checking his risk factors for heart disease like blood pressure and cholesterol. Now, one day, he has a sudden pain in his chest. So his wife quickly calls an ambulance. It arrives early and he is rushed to the nearest hospital. At the emergency department, he is seen by a doctor immediately and he finds out that he is having a heart attack. Now, within two hours, he has a life-saving surgery to open his arteries. And then in about a couple of days, he's discharged. And he's discharged with all five medications that he's supposed to take after surviving a heart attack. He is also discharged with a referral to rehabilitation for his heart. And his wife, Mary, is told to make sure that he has good heart, healthy heart health. Oh, sorry, healthy heart diet. <laughs> and also that he sees his doctor regularly. And this is Mary. Mary also goes to see her doctor a little more often than John does, and she goes alone. Her doctor asks her whether she had her mammogram done, when her last um, bowel cancer screening was, and also about her mood, but is not too concerned about her heart. He thinks that women don't really get heart disease. So one day, about a year after John had his heart attack, she is out at the shops. She doesn't feel well. She's tired. And it feels like she has indigestion. Mm, uneasy, unusual. So she drives herself to the nearest hospital. She waits, she waits three, four hours, and she's finally seen by a doctor, and then the doctor thinks it's indigestion. So he prescribes her indigestion medication and sends her home. Next day, she wakes up feeling even worse. John has an urgent business meeting to attend, so she doesn't say anything to John and waits for him to go to work. And then she finally drives herself back to the hospital. Again, she waits and waits, and doctor finally sees her. This time a different doctor, who is more concerned, does a blood test and finds out that she's having a heart attack. And then the doctor tells her to rest well for the evening, and then the following day she's discharged with a couple of medications. She doesn't receive the surgery to open her arteries. She doesn't receive the referral to rehabilitation program. Do you see any differences? You might think this is an exaggerated story, but it happens every day in Australia and all around the world. To put things into perspective, a young Australian woman, this, is, this only happened a couple of months ago in 2019. A young Australian woman had chest pain, so she went to the hospital quickly. She um, waited and finally saw a doctor who told her, uh, don't think this is a heart attack. You're too young. I'm a research fellow and a biostatistician. I use large national and international health data sets to, uh, to understand and assess how we provide care to people with heart disease. And I have some shocking facts uh, to share with you. And these are from various studies, including some of my own. So first, Oh, people, even some doctors, still think that heart disease is men's <laughs> disease, and they underestimate and underplay the risk of heart disease in women. Even when heart disease has been the biggest killer, single biggest killer of women for over a decade, it kills 
5,000 more women than breast cancer every year, and this is an only in Australia, Australia alone. Second, women, they are less likely to get care, or um, they're less likely to get checks for their heart disease um, at the doctors. They, half of the women in fact, um, when they're experiencing heart attack, they're misdiagnosed, there's indigestion, depression, anxiety and muscle pain by doctors. Third, women are less likely to be seen quickly at the emergency department. Women are less likely to receive surgery to open the arteries. Women are less likely to receive the guideline recommended medications. And women are less likely to be referred to rehabilitation programs. And also, last, women don't get enough support from the partners and families. So what can we do? We need to acknowledge and shift our mindsets that heart disease is not men's disease. It's everyone's disease. We also need to remember that both men and women need our heart health checked at least once a year. We also need to remember that there are symptoms of heart attack other than chest pain that are more prevalent in women, and this includes pain in the jaw, neck, shoulder, arm, back, um, this uncomfortable feeling that feels like heartburn, indigestion, nausea, fatigue, breathlessness. And also we need to remember women, we need more of you in research studies so that we can represent ourselves. We need to represent ourselves so that more research and advocacy, identifying and highlighting these gaps for women can be done. And also to change the way that medical professionals have been trained from many years ago. So before I go, I have a homework for you all, Johns and the Marys. I want you to take one woman you know, old or young, and who hasn't had their heart health checked in the last year, and get it done. Let's all work together to beat this country's and the world's biggest killer. Thank you.